We're back again. This is the amateur extra license exam study. We're in sub element nine delta. We're still talking about antennas and there's not much I can show you here. Uh, most of this is just going to be some memorization. Question one, how much does the gain of an ideal parabolic reflector antenna increase when the operating frequency is doubled? And that is by six decibels. So when the frequency doubles, you get four times. Four times. That's what six decibels comes out to is four times the increase. So that's, that's pretty neat to know. How can two linearly polarized Yagi antennas be used to produce circular polarization? That is to arrange two Yagis on the same axis and perpendicular to each other. So one vertical, one horizontal, uh, the other way around. One vertical, one horizontal. Driven elements at the same point on the boom and fed 90 degrees out of phase. Just going to have to remember that one. Question number three, what is the most efficient location for a loading coil on an electrically short whip? Now, I've actually done something similar to this. I did a base loaded coil, but the most efficient location is near the center of the vertical radiator. And if you go look at a super, the new super antenna, where's that coil? It's somewhat close to the center. If you look at some of the other coil types, they're usually at the center. Now the KX2, it's usually at the bottom. KX2, KX3, you know, with the AX1, AX2 antennas from Elecraft, they're at the bottom. So they're not the most efficient, but they're tiny. Why should antenna loading coils have a high ratio of reactance to resistance? And that is to maximize efficiency. You want to have a high ratio of reactance because reactance is what cancels out the capacitive reactance out of, um, uh, out of the, uh, the antenna system that you're making this for. Approximately how long is a Yagi's driven element? And that is a half wavelength. So a Yagi starts out with a half wavelength dipole and then they add reflectors and directors. What happens to SWR bandwidth when one or more loading coils are used to resonate an electrically short antenna? The SWR bandwidth where you can actually use it is decreased because as you start loading it with these coils, you're increasing the Q. If you increase the Q, you narrow your bandwidth. What is an advantage of top loading an electrically short HF vertical antenna? And that means putting the coil on the tip, the tippy top and you get improved radiation efficiency. What happens as the Q of an antenna increases, the SWR bandwidth decreases. And that's what I just mentioned earlier. What is the function of a loading coil in an electrically short antenna? That is to resonate the antenna by canceling the capacitive reactance. So the coil is an inductor. You use that inductance to cancel the capacitive reactance. That's like the MFJ1898. It has a loading coil that you can change the height of based on centimeters, the new super antenna, and some of the Wolf River coils. You can change the coil, the amount of coil, to match the band that you're on. How does radiation resistance of a base fed whip antenna change below its resonant frequency? So that radiation resistance decreases. And you could view that on the SWR meters, antenna analyzers and such. 
Why do most two element Yagis with normal spacing have a reflector instead of a director? That reflector produces a higher gain. And with a Yagi, that's usually why you have a Yagi is for gain. What is the purpose of making a Yagi's parasitic elements either longer or shorter than resonance? And that is to control a phase shift. The control of phase shift. If you use your Yagi design software, you'll notice that it's usually going to make them longer. I'm not, no, scratch that, shorter than the half wave resonance. And that is to control the phase shift so that you get a nice lobe at the front. We've made it to the end of this one. Just a bunch of memorization. Go over this one again and again so that you can get one more question right on your amateur extra license exam. Thanks so much for watching. Good luck on your test. Good luck on your studies. Again, if you need to cheat on my channel by going and looking some of this stuff up somewhere else, by all means do. Because the more that you immerse yourself in it, the more you're going to learn. I encourage you to do that. Take time to study. Have fun learning this stuff if you can. I'm Robbie W1RCP. Good luck in 73.